Hi, my name is Cy Horton and I'm an application engineer for our 3D Doc team here at Faro UK. During this tutorial, what I'd like to show you is how to take Point Cloud across through Recap and into Autodesk Inventor. This is part one of a two series tutorial, as in part two, I will look at taking a mesh across into Autodesk Inventor. The first part of the process is to obviously perform the scan. What I've got here is a nice simple three star scan, although I could have used a focus scan. But the first thing I need to do is clean up some of this data, because as you can see in here, what I don't want to take in is all the spurious data around this particular article. So first off, I'm going to look at my orientation. So if I look at my view from the top, you can see that when I take that data across through Recap and into Inventor, I'm not going to be orientated very well. So I'm just going to quickly rotate this. I'm going to do that by using the transformation option on this scan. So if we go to transformation, and I'm going to change my Z rotation. Now having had a look at this before, I know that roughly to get this pump horizontal on the screen, it's about 81.5 degrees. Now obviously looking at that, all I'm going to do is just line this up with the edge of the screen to see whether I've got it almost horizontal and that's good enough for the purposes of this. The next thing I need to do is isolate some of the data. Now I can use the clipping box or because I'm using freestyle data I've automatically got a scan point cloud. So to use the next two tools if you're using focus data you'd first need to create either your scan point cloud which is individual scan point clouds or you'd need to create your project point cloud which I've covered in other movies. Once you've done that you can then use the two tools up here either the polygon selector for drawing an area around a piece of point cloud and then right clicking and doing delete or you can use the brush selector. With the brush selector the beauty of it being you can select individual points or float over individual areas and using your scroll wheel you can see here by scrolling forward I'm starting to enlarge the size of the selector or if I use the shift key it goes at twice the speed. So here if I just want to select these points I could enlarge the area of my selector, click, right click, delete selection and those points have instantly gone. Also you can use the options up here for adding to the selection or subtracting to the selection or intersecting with the selection. Now to do this all you do is highlight an area and during the highlight it goes yellow and if I then add to selection you can see that my area then becomes green and that's telling me that I'm adding to a selection because the selection area is green. If I want to subtract from the selection the cursor then turns red so I instantly know that visually I'm subtracting from that selection I've already made or we can go to use the intersection option and then my cursor turns blue so straight away we can see what areas we're selecting. So I could work around here and delete all the bits I want or probably the easiest thing for me is if I view this from the top at the moment you can see I'm working in a perspective fashion I've also got some areas selected there so rather than modify my selection handles if I just use control D on the keyboard that gets rid of that selection I can then use a clipping box over the top and before I set my clipping box up what I'm actually going to do is change my camera from perspective to orthographic so I know that what I'm actually looking at is the very top of this particular pump so then all we're going to do is select the clipping box drag the handles around and I'm just going to zoom in at this point and look and make sure I'm just clipping the back of it nicely and then we'll come in at the sides we've got the hose on the side so I want to keep that we're coming from the left hand side and then we'll come in from the front. When we've got that we'll rotate around we'll just pull up the bottom handle and then we'll just extrude the top handle so it's just over the top of the pump. Once I've got everything I need to what I can then do is I could go straight for an export although because I know I don't need that data when I'm exporting instead of that what I can do is use two of the new options in scene 5.5 to delete visible or delete invisible points. So if I delete invisible points the system will then go and delete everything outside of that clipping box. So in theory, that clipping box is not required. So I can just delete it. And there you can see that everything has disappeared outside of that area. I've got some other bits and pieces around here. So I'll add to a selection, pick my paintbrush. And all I'm going to do is pick these points down here. And to pick them all, I'm just going to keep my finger on the mouse button and just make sure I've picked them up. When I'm ready, just right click and do delete 
got one last point down there so again we'll pick the tool again hover over right click and delete as you may have seen if I just keep my finger on the button I can trace an area around wherever I need to and fill in the gaps or just control D to deselect so now we've got everything cleaned up to export we just right click import export and this time we're exporting scan point cloud because we're working with a scan point cloud if we we're just exporting raw FLS data we'd export scan points so I'm just going to export a scan point cloud so I'm just going to save our file location here go to my desktop go into here and call it pump one and then click save and then we're just going to export that E57 file now that's done the E57 file exists so if I had to go to that folder location I can see that I've got pump one E57 ready to bring into recap before I do that what I'm also going to do is show you some multiple sections so same as before if I look at the pump from the top again we're going to flip into an orthographic mode and then we're going to create a clipping box over the top we're going to get this nicely lined up and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the clipping box roughly in that position there I'll take a slice through my data just going to narrow in these sides and if we rotate we can make sure that we're picking up the top of the pump like so and then we'll pull up the bottom now this time as I've shown you in previous tutorials we can now right click on that clipping box and we can create clipping boxes along an axis so here you can see it's going in the z-axis because they're going up we actually want them to go in the x-axis so go to the right I'm going to narrow down this here to be a meter and then we're just going to drop that down by 100 mil increments so let's say we'll take our clipping boxes at a 200 mil increment and we're going to have three of them and then we click OK so that then gives us four slices through the petrol pump now this time if we were to go into any of these and do import export export 3d selection what we're going to get in our e57 file is we're actually going to get four slices in one file and the reason for that is the export here works on a what you see is what you get option so because I can see all four slices as I do the export because they're linked together in one bounding box they're all going to be exported as one complete E57 file if I want to modify that what I have to do is disable those clipping boxes so I turn them off now when I go to export them it's only going to export that one slice but it's a good feature if you're doing something like a loft in Inventor and you know that you've got an area where you can create one section box here and one section box here you can take those into Inventor and firstly you're minimizing the amount of data that you have to work with Inventor but also you're keeping your file size down so if you want more advice on the export options from scene you can look at my colleagues Chris Palmer's tutorial on YouTube so now we've got that done what we're going to do is fire up recap we're going to create a new project the project is going to be created in our desktop pump folder and I'm going to give it a name of pump1 click proceed we're going to select the files to import and we're looking for pump1 E57 so we'll open that and just click index and because we're only working with small files the indexing process is fairly quick and then we're just going to launch our project so here you'll see we've got our petrol pump on the screen exported from scene all I'm going to do is do a quick save and again for more of the features of recap Chris has also covered that in a tutorial on YouTube where he goes through more of the in-depth features for filtering and chopping and slicing the point cloud up before you even take it near Revit or Inventor or AutoCAD. Now I've just done a save there but one of the other things you can do is export and if we export here we have the option to export as an RCP which we've already created or we could export as an RCS. Now if we're sending somebody RCS the RCS also lives under our support folder here so we've already got that RCS but there are two distinct advantages to either using the RCS or the RCP file in Inventor so we're now ready to move over to Inventor I've saved my recap project so I'm going to close recap down I'm going to fire up Inventor so when it's open I'm going to create a new part and then Inventor starts up so I'm using the Autodesk Inventor 2016 so in here we've got all the tools that you should be used to now the aim of this tutorial is not to show you how to use all these tools it's more to show you the advantages of how you can take point cloud across from scene through recap and into inventor to start working with as you would do on a normal day-to-day -day process so under the manage tab we have the point cloud options 
So if we're bringing across the E57 file and we wanted to automatically index it via Inventor, we've got the recap link here, or we could use the attach icon, go to our desktop, and here we're looking for the RCS file. So if we wanted to bring in the RCS file, we could locate it under the support folder. If I just do that for starters, click open, it will then ask me to place that scan. Now here we can adjust the density, so how many millions of points we bring in and how dense the point cloud is. Now you will see a difference between bringing in focus data and free star data. Specifically it comes down to volume. With the focus we're scanning much larger objects so the point cloud will appear to be denser. On the free star we're scanning typically smaller objects. Also, we can set the resolution and the quality on the focus, whereas on the freestyle, it's down to how long we spend on scanning that particular item. The more time will give us a denser point cloud, will give us more points with the inventor. I'm going to leave those both at maximum. I'm going to leave all the settings as they are, but we can search at origin, or we can rotate along an axis with X, Y, and Z, or we can just click OK. As soon as we've done that, we've got our point cloud within inventor. Now because I bought in the RCS file, the one thing I don't get access to is the navigator. So I'm going to bring that in again, and I'm just going to delete the pump over here in my tree. Click attach. This time we're looking for the recap project, and click open, and place it in our view. Click OK, and now we've got the navigator option. So within navigator, we can start to manipulate and turn scans on and off. So if we've got multiple scans in a project, it makes it much easier to work with. Also because it's working with the RCP, if we do happen to do any work in recap, then that will automatically be updated in our inventor project. So if we then look at some of the other tools, all I'm going to do is look at this from the front. Obviously I've got my rotations wrong, but for the purposes of this it doesn't really matter. I showed you in Faro Scene that we could export a series of slices, but in inventor we have this box crop option up here, whereby we start to click on the screen what we'll actually do is look at a section through the data so using the manipulation handles here and making sure that we're covering everything just by dragging them out if I click the tick instantly I've created a section through the point cloud now if we're working with that obviously if I look at this from the front this point cloud even this section has depth to it here so what I could do is I could use the cloud points which are going to actually snap to the point cloud which you can see here I can pick up a series of cloud points and then when I start my sketch command over here I can use that sketch command to project those points onto a plane because obviously if I'm picking on points here I don't know whether I'm picking on points at the front or the back of the section but Inventor's intelligent enough to know that as you start to pick up on those points it can then project those on to a fixed plane or what I can do if I uncrop that and then I change this option here to a cloud plane this cloud plane is looking over the density of the point clouds you can see instantly it's trying to snap to those points so if we wanted to draw on the front face of this point cloud you can see that as I float over it the plane is fairly static or as I go to the floor it's picking up on the floor so once I've got my plane snapped to my point cloud I can go to start a sketch I can pick that working plane and I can then take a line and start to snap to my point cloud around the outside of this area as you would normally do close that point off finish my sketch and there I've got my sketch you could then extrude that sketch to give me the base of my petrol pump so as you can see very quickly we can take point cloud in we can use the cloud planes or the cloud points to snap to that point cloud and then we can use the normal tools that we use on a day-to-day -day basis within Inventor to very quickly model up or make modifications to these components. So it might be that I need to make a modification or an addition to the top of this particular petrol pump. Rather than having to measure it with traditional hand tools, what I could do is go out with something like the Freestyle, measure the top of the pump, bring that point cloud into Inventor. I've then got a surface that I can then use the sketch tools to trace over the top of and then use the extrusion tools to make that modification which means that it's going to fit first time. Thank you for watching, I hope it's been of use and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming movies.
These will all be published on my YouTube channel, so please feel free to subscribe. I will also send out notifications via my Twitter account or on LinkedIn or on the laser scanning forum. If you're struggling with any aspects of scene, I would encourage you to use the knowledge base at faro.com. All these tutorials are linked to key cases on the knowledge base, plus a lot more tips and tricks. Thank you.